Hello and welcome to the 3D Blu-ray Bunker. This is where I look exclusively at films on 3D Blu-ray, not to do a movie review, but to focus almost entirely on the 3D with just a short word at the end about the film itself. And this time I'm looking at Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. Uh, it's got an aspect ratio of 2.39 to 1 and it was post converted into 3D. So the title alone might set off alarm bells for 3D fans because uh, as good as a jungle setting can look in 3D, when that's post converted 3D, there are plenty of chances for it to look bad due to the difficulty of converting dense foliage into realistic and correct 3D. So on the whole I was quite pleasantly surprised that it frequently doesn't look actively bad and uh, as often as not they do manage to get a reasonable 3D effect working. Uh, this stuff is at its best when there are large leaves in the foreground and uh, ideally the camera is static or only moving very slowly. Uh, so these shots, whilst they're definitely not stunning pieces of 3D, uh, they certainly work well enough and help to create a feeling of space. Even when the plant life is a bit more dense and complex, they still do an okay job of creating a genuine feeling of stereo depth. And in doing so, I think they do manage to put a bit more atmosphere into the view than you'd get in 2D. On the whole then, the problems that I'd have expected to see with converting this stuff into 3D look to have been fairly well handled, and I think this all benefits from being in 3D rather than suffers from it, which is what I'd have thought must have been a concern of everyone involved when they started to think about post-converting this one. Having said that, some of those foliage problems do rear their head from time to time, and when they do, it is a bit nasty. Uh, so before we even get to the jungle, there's a fairly classic example of how bad it can look when the camera moves past the tree here, and this looks awful with wildly incorrect depth information on show. This would probably be virtually impossible to convert well, so uh, there's no shame in the way it turned out, but this kind of thing does stand out like a sore thumb and draws attention to itself in a way that it's definitely not supposed to. There are a few moments like this in the jungle too, and again I think it's at its worst when the camera moves past tree leaves. Uh, if the camera was static you'd maybe get away with post-converting views like this uh, into uh, just about acceptable level, uh, but with a dynamic camera it is a recipe for disaster. There is a shot with a load of leaves that does work uh, in this bit with the helicopter and I suspect that's because they're presumably digital leaves, so uh, either rendered in native 3D or more probably just much easier to control and overlay separately. The only other error that I thought really stood out was the reflection on this Land Rover's windscreen. Uh, a reflection should obviously be uh, somewhere behind the surface that it's reflecting off, so when a conversion puts it in the same 3D space as the surface, your brain just kind of screams that something's not right. Uh, I know none of this really matters, and I'm not for a moment saying it spoils the film, but incorrect 3D is something that can somehow feel like it's uh, an affront to the natural order of things, much more so I think than a bad special effect or something like that. Something I'll always mention, uh, even if no one cares, is when films throw in that silly binocular shot, and it's worse when 3D films do it, because the view through binoculars is uh, hyper stereo, but but unsurprisingly, this film scores 0 out of 2 by having that incorrect figure of 8 view, uh, as well as uh, a very much non hyper stereo view through it. With post-converted films, uh, generally speaking, I think you can always find several shots that look as if they were staged with 3D in mind, and others where it looks like they weren't thinking about it at all. So for the former, there are a lot of structures and compositions that I think are absolutely good for a nice 3D view. Uh, the bats hanging down in the foreground here, for example, uh, and a lovely long corridor that could stretch a nice long way back into the screen. And when he runs through the little frame in front of the house, uh, although I think I think it would have been better from a 3D point of view if the camera had followed him through it. Sometimes the 3D feels more relevant, uh, like when the kids are in detention. Uh, those blinds behind them do help to place them in a separate space from the freedom beyond them, so it's a nicely effective use of 3D. It's not 3D eye candy by any stretch, um, but it's dramatically pleasing 3D nonetheless. And there's another nice moment where the 3D helps to draw us into the scene along with the characters as we uh, follow someone through some nice 3D framing. On the other hand, there are times when you do wonder how much thought was given to 3D while it was being filmed. So, for example, here's a girl with a selfie stick. So, if you're making a 3D movie and someone's holding one of these ego rods, there's maybe a fairly obvious way to film it, but that's not what's done here. Uh, and perhaps they were just avoiding being obvious, and uh, if so, fair enough. But I'd have thought it would have been irresistible to poke this thing out of the screen and uh, have it invade our space, which would be in keeping with what these 
statistics are all about. And another example is snakes. Uh, we've seen these in 3D films before, being used in uh, obvious ways, uh, but the ones that appear here never do what you might expect them to. On the other hand, and this could perhaps be seen as an example of how creative and forward-thinking the film's use of 3D is, there is an excellent shot of a nest of snakes not doing the obvious pop-out thing, but here in a low-down shot they're all rising up and uh, each of them is sitting in its own 3D space. This is really good 3D and uh, I think it's my favourite 3D shot in the whole film. I just can't put my finger on why, but for some reason I hardly noticed this the first time I watched the film. I think I've said many times before that uh, those low-down views across a flat plane are one of my favourite types of 3D view, and uh, there's another really nice one, made better still by the way the camera slowly tracks forwards and uh, finishing with the bird emerging from behind. There's another nice example of that low-down view across a flat plane at the beginning of the film uh, along this beach, and uh, I especially like this one as the 3D places focus on the foreground as the shot progresses, and this is where the thing that kicks off the story is found. So that's all some nicely effective 3D. 3D, although it is fair to say that the 3D in this film is never particularly strong, and by that I don't mean that the film doesn't have any great pop-out moments, uh, although it definitely doesn't, uh, but just that the strength of the 3D is mostly quite subdued. There are one or two very brief moments when there's a debris blast, uh, where a few bits and pieces maybe emerge a small way out of the screen, but not really in any way to get excited about. Not much of the film does intrude into uh, negative parallax, but there is the odd moment when something story-related does uh, jut a little way out towards us, uh, like the jewel here, which is a specific story item, or the Jumanji box itself, which is very obviously an important story item, so it's nice to see these put solidly into noticeable 3D space, even if it is uh, very gentle and not as in your face as you might want it to be. Maybe one of the best um, popping moments is the back end of some spears here, which are uh, in a shot that's held for long enough to have some fun with. Or there's also the point at which the uh, characters are transferred into the game with this sort of stretch disintegration effect, and uh, it's another one of the film's stronger 3D moments. And uh, going the other way, into the screen rather than out of it, uh, there's a nice piece of 3D when they uh, revert to an in-game cutscene uh, with a brief but very effective passage through 3D space. So that shot with all the snakes was my favourite 3D shot in the film, but there are a few others that I think challenge it. Uh, one of the things 3D is superb at is emphasising the feeling of height, and uh, there are a few shots where that comes into place. Uh, this one's nice enough, although probably not as effective as it could have been, but there are some other views down where the sensation of height and uh, danger is very well done thanks to the 3D. This is properly good stuff, and uh, I think at its best, during a a rock fall sequence, and when you're high you never ever want to come down. These scenes are so well suited to 3D, and it's good to see them make the most of these views, with the effect really working wonders to make the shot work far better than it ever could in 2D. On the whole, I'd call this a competent but unexciting 3D conversion. It almost always works and looks three-dimensional, but only very occasionally in a way where you genuinely appreciate the effect. Certainly worth a look, but equally certainly not 3D demo material. I'd normally say that I'd always take 3D over 2D, um, particularly when it's not a great film, but I enjoyed this one sufficiently that maybe next time I watch it I'll look at it in 4K for the benefits of that format, and uh, possibly won't find myself missing its occasional good 3D shot all that much. Just a very quick word about the film itself, uh, I really enjoyed this. The uh, four kids are all good, and the uh, main stars of the film as their adult in-game counterparts are all on good form too. Uh, the story about finding out about yourself by being put in someone else's shoes and learning from one another might not be all that original, but it's done in a way that's enjoyable and a good romp. And It's one of those films that when it reaches its conclusion, you really do feel like you've been on a bit of an adventure. Uh, and old Dwayne Johnson has not only starred in more 3D films, than anyone, but he's been so prolific that with this one he managed to have starred in two totally unrelated films with the same name, uh, something I can't think of another example of. Uh, in probably its most obvious moment, it ends with what felt to me like a very incongruous use of the Guns N' Roses song, and I know it's got the same name as the film, or the other way around, but it does feel a bit out of place to me. Maybe a more appropriate and fun one to have gone out on would have been Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me? Uh, that's a reference for ageing. John Hughes fans like me. So I hope you found this in some way useful, and if so, I hope you'll join me again soon for a look at another 3D Blu-ray. Until then, thanks for looking in on this one. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.